Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all to this uh, wonderful event, which is our International Men's Day Two Day Summit. Um, I am going to be your host. My name is Timothy Onekutu. I'm, uh, I'm a member of the Customer Experience and Analytics team, and uh, it, it's a huge honor for me to be hosting this uh, virtual seminar for the International Men's Day. Um, the International Men's Day, as we all know, is uh, it, it's celebrated on November 19th every year. Um, it's a day that is set aside, you know, to celebrate the positive values that we as men bring to the world. Um, it aims to celebrate our contributions to the world in general, to our families, to our communities, and to also spotlight and highlight, you know, special role models that we can look up to and also raise awareness of our well-being as men. Basically, it's a day that, you know, to be to be a man, like they say, it's not it's not an easy feat. So we do, we deserve a day to be celebrated and a day to even celebrate ourselves. So I'd just like to welcome you all to this um, wonderful session. It's going, even though it's going to be a brief one, but I believe it's going to be a very impactful session. Um, I'll just quickly um, run through the profile for our guest speaker for today. Uh, I'm sure some of you may have seen uh, the publications internally, and I'm sure we're all excited to, to hear from this uh, fantastic individual. So um, I'll just quickly read his profile. Ekemeni, Ekemeni. Aniefok Ekeret, aka Kemen. Kemen is the name that we all know him for. Kemen is a fitness ambassador and a corporate wellness expert in and a fitness entrepreneur, a social influencer, an actor, model, and Nigeria's highly sought after wellness coach. He was a member of um, the Big Brother house, housemates and he has a strong interest in healthy living, startups, rural, rural support programs, and entertainment. He is the CEO of the Basic Intensity Training Experience, which short form is BITE, and has drawn participants and fitness beneficiaries all over the world. Being a celebrity trainer, Kemen has a portfolio of high profile clients, including international athletes, and movie stars. He's a multiple award-winning fitness and events manager credited with the development of several successful fitness conventions and festivals in Nigeria and also in the diaspora. His extraordinary talent and passion has stenciled his name amongst the stars that have contributed immensely towards the promotion and propagation of fitness tourism in Nigeria. He hails from the oil-rich Aquaibom state, but has over the past 10 years campaigned aggressive, aggressively towards the adoption of fitness and wellness as a source of internal generated revenue for his home state and even the nation at, at large. His hobbies, as you would guess, include working out, mentorship, and football. He lives and he resides in Lagos. So I will just like to welcome with a with a with a grand reception i'd like to welcome mr kemen who is our speaker for today kemen you are warmly welcome to this uh two-day virtual seminar by heritage bank thank you thank you uh, mr timothy and uh it's good to be here heritage bank is a family and yes. i feel I feel privileged to have the opportunity to be here with um, everybody that is on this um, program today. So uh, I'm still at the gym. I just finished my classes. So okay. I'll be drinking a lot of water in the middle of this session. So you guys have to bear with me. Right. Uh, good morning, everyone. And 
today we are going to talk about um, physical fitness, a state of health and well-being. Um, I'll try to make this not to sound too serious. I'll try to make it as engaging as possible. So uh, sometimes I like to just drive, but you can slow me down and stop and ask some questions because uh, this is for you as well as your feedbacks are very important to me. So before we go forward, I'd like you, some of you to know that um, physical fitness did not start today. Some of you know that. And I'm sure that you've heard about the name Hippocrates. Uh, was a Greek physician. A lot of people consider him as the father of medicine, right? And interestingly, he had, a, he was a great supporter of physical fitness and had a lot of quotes you know, that related to physical fitness, healthy eating, you know, and so on. So I'll just um, quote him uh, and then um, I'll quote some other notable guys, what they think, what they feel about physical fitness, and then I'll take it from there. So Hippocrates once said that uh, eating alone will not keep a man well. He must also exercise. Um, for food and exercise while processing different qualities, yet work together to produce health. He went on to say it is necessary, as it appears, to discern the power of various exercises, both natural and artificial. In today's fitnesses, we would say both body weight exercise and weighted exercises. Um, to know which of them tends to increase the flesh and less and which of them tends to lessen it. In today's understanding, it will mean which one helps you to lose fat and which one helps you to build muscles. And then it goes on to say, um, and not only this, but also to proportion the exercise to the bulk of food, to the constitution of the patient, to the age of the individual, meaning that um, a proper understanding of physical fitness and nutrition because they both work hand in hand. We'll take certain things in, into consideration. And these things are the age of the person, allergies, food preference, body type, blood type, and all those things. These are all factors that come together when trying to create a, a plan for yourself. He has another quote that says, can you hear me clearly? I want to be sure that I'm not talking to myself. Can you all hear me clearly? Timothy, can yes, you hear yes. me clearly? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. All right. He also has another quote that says, wellness is more than just physical exercise. It is holistic and multidimensional. It comprises six dimensions that include physical, intellectual, emotional, environmental, social, in spiritual wellness. Now, this guy existed um, 40 BC, and up till today, these things are still very, very important. Um, president John Kennedy, the one time um, US president, was also very big on physical fitness. And he said that physical fitness is not only the most important key to a healthy body, he said it is the basis of dynamics and creative intellectual ability. Meaning that if we want to be fully functional with our everyday activity, it is important for us to make physical fitness a part of our day. So moving forward, uh, I want to ask the question, what is physical fitness? What is this thing? Because a lot of people mistake physical fitness for a physical activity. So you, when you ask someone, do you work out? They say, ah, my office is on the 11th floor. I use the stairs every day to go to my office. And I mean, that should be counted as a workout. The guy that works at the side to say, ah, I carry like 50 bags of cement on my head and I climb two story buildings. At least that should count as a workout. These are all physical activities, but you cannot, um, um, replace physical fitness to a physical activity because 
it is the physical fitness that helps to improve your ability to go through these physical activities with ease. So if you pant, if you pant on the seventh floor and on the tenth floor before you get to eleventh floor, physical fitness should make you over time go all the way to the eleventh floor without having to pant anywhere in between. Do you get my point? All right. So <laughs> physical fitness, of course, um, I would say is um, one's ability to execute daily activities with optimal performance, endurance, and strength. With the management of disease, fatigue, and stress, and reduce sedentary behavior. That is physical fitness. And then um, the focus is health. Health is the destination. And there's also wellness, there's also fitness, there's also nutrition. So sometimes we mix up everything. And we call fitness wellness, we call wellness health, some people call health wellness, and we just mix up everything. But I, I have this illustration that I, I try to use to show people what it is, what which is. So physical fitness and nutrition are luggages, right? Wellness is the journey. Health is the destination. So that is how you should, you know, think about it, meaning that you need to combine physical fitness with a healthy eating habit as part of a wellness journey. Don't forget that mental wellness is also in that line. Um, um, we have uh, intellectual, emotional, spiritual wellness. You know, I'm, this, I'm sure these are not my topics. <laughs> you, I'm sure you have someone that tells you about uh, mental wellness and all that, but these are all the journey to achieve health, which is the destination where we all hope to get to, where we all are trying to get to. So next time, um, I mean, we want to talk about these things. It's important that you, you understand where each and every one of them stand. Physical fitness and nutrition, those are the luggages you take on the wellness journey to get to the health destination. So, what is health? Um, what the World Health Organization defines health to be a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease and illness. So you see what I said before. I said it's a state of complete. That means at the end of the destination. You know, at the end of sorry, at the end of the journey, that's where you find health. That's why it says it's a state of complete physical, mental, social well-being, not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. And then what is wellness? The World Health Organization also goes on to say that uh, wellness is the optimal state of health of individuals or groups. And wellness is expressed as a positive approach to living. It's a positive wellness is a positive approach to living. Living is what we do every day of our life. So wellness is supposed to be a conscious mindset of our everyday life. You know, so it says, yeah, um, the primary difference between health and wellness is that health is a goal. Yeah, I said that earlier. Wellness is the active process of achieving it. You truly cannot have health without first achieving wellness. Wellness has a direct influence on overall health, which is essential for living a robust, happy, and fulfilled life. So, um with this i think maybe we have an understanding i think we've been able to set the ball rolling on why physical fitness is important why we're even having it in this conversation how it relates to health which is the most important thing we keep you away from the doctor but it doesn't mean that you cannot do regular checks which is very important because wellness requires that you do all these regular checks now there's also a question of um 
how do I work out? How do I start? What do I engage in? Some people won't be talk about fitness or physical fitness. What they think is people like us, we cost it sometimes. Someone like me, I cost it sometimes. Because I make I make working out look like it's a fight. I make it look like it's a competition. And then some people are like, if this is what it's all about, I will not come there. But you see, this is just, just an aspect of fitness. It is not what physical fitness is. Physical fitness don't have to be too rigorous. It doesn't have to be stressful. You don't have to feel like you're going back to the nursery or secondary school. You don't have to feel like you're going to an, an all classic competition. You just have to find what works for you, do what you can and achieve, I mean, your goals, whatever the goals is. So at least 150 minutes, that's 2.5 hours of moderate intensity exercise per week is good enough. That means 30 minutes a day for five days a week broken down into 10 minutes first. That works for you. You can do at least 75 minutes of rigorous intensity exercise per week. You know, it would deliver the same benefit. You know, if you allow fitness, if, if your fitness level allows, you can also increase the intensity. That means you can run for 15 minutes, for example, instead of walking brisk walk for 30 minutes. So you have the options of doing a 30 minutes brisk walk, or you can do a 15 minutes jogging, or you can do a five minute sprint. So if you see me do a five minute sprint, it's because I can. It doesn't mean that that's what fitness is all about. It must be a five minute sprint. No, it must not be a five minute sprint. It can be a 15 minutes jogging. It can be a 30 minutes brisk walk. All right. So. I will jump because I know some people will want to ask questions. I will keep jumping and jumping and <laughs> all right. So how intensely am I supposed to exercise? These are the questions. So let me um, share some intensity variations. So low intensity. How do you know that the program is low intensity? How it feels? Easy breathing. It warms you but it warms you up makes you sweat just slightly, but makes you sweat more in time. You know, you can easily engage in it for the longest time. And these are these exercises include casual walking, stretching, Tai Chi, for those that love martial arts, slow movement, coordinated with a bit of meditation. So from there we move to moderate. So I'll go back. So low intensity is casual walking, stretching in Tai Chi. We go to moderate intensity. Now, how do you know that you're working out with a moderate intensity? How it feels? You're working, your breathing is slightly faster. You're starting to sweat more. You're still able to walk in and talk, have a sense, make a sentence. Not a full conversation like the low intensity but you can make a sentence and you're able to sing while doing it. These are ways to test your intensity so you don't pass out while working out. When you're working out, you can, can you talk while you're working out? Can you sing while you're working out? If you can sing, then you're still in a moderate intensity um, workout phase. And the exercises include brisk walking, water aerobics, riding a bike on a level ground, double tennis, pushing a lawnmower, hiking, weight training, paced weight training, not high intensity weight training, skateboarding, rollerblading, volleyball. I'd like to add badminton, low pace, beginner pattern badminton, not too much, I add that. So these are exercises that you do that have moderate intensity. I'd also like to include jog, um, interval runs, so I'll tell you a little bit about interval, interval runs for those of you that like to run. And I'll use the Koyiling Bridge for an example because I, I see people run around there. So interval runs, you can run for two poles. See the electric poles? You can run for two poles and walk for two poles. Run for another two poles, walk for another two poles. 
Now, after a while, you find out that you can now run three poles and walk for two poles. Run three poles, walk for two poles. After a while, you realize you can now run four poles, walk for one pole. That means your, your endurance level as your endurance threshold has increased. You can now walk for, yeah, run for four poles, walk for one or walk for two, but run for four poles. Before you know it, you've done the whole bridge without walking. That's how to grow your intensity, you know. And then we we'll move to the rigorous exercise. How it feels. Um, really working, breathing very hard, sweating very hard, and too breathless to talk or to make a full sentence, not to talk of singing. When you get to that point, know that the exercise has become really rigorous. And at that point, you have to make sure that you have your um, beats to track your heart rate, you know, to make sure that you don't overdo because uh, I'm fat, fat, you don't keep messing. You understand? <laughs> so, so um, and these um, activities include jogging or running, fast running, fast swimming, riding a bike fast or on a hill, single tennis, soccer. So when I said double tennis, I meant having two players in the court. So that way you don't have to run the full length of the court all the time. So in here we have single tennis, meaning you have to run the full length of the court all the time. We have soccer, we have skipping rope, we have aerobics, we have martial arts, we have gymnastics, we have secure training, uh, boot camp, we have high intensity interval training, and we have bikes. Same thing, uh, same as what I do. So, fitness versus health. So fitness helps you to, helps you with enhanced performance, all round performance, enhanced performance, all round performance. For the married people, it's important to know that fitness helps to enhance your performance, both at your workplace and your marital workplace, if you understand what I mean. So it's very important, very, very important. And let me tell you, for the married people, and I'm saying it's not out of experience because I'm not married, but what the book says, that if you kill your workout, if you have a good workout session, so first of all, if you have a good night rest, you will have a good workout session. And if you conquer your night and conquer your workout session at the gym, there is no problem at the workplace that will get to you. Try it. Let me move my glasses so you know I'm serious. Try it. There is no stress in the office that will get to you. Be like, I, beg. I, don't, I don't see what's in past that one. You know, I benched 100 kg today, and this one is telling me, what are you telling me? Those papers, is that one I'll not do? I'll not do. So you go through your everyday life with ease because of how well you've conquered your other activities. You know, and that is the place of physical fitness. And also, physical fitness helps you you know, with enhanced performance. It helps to improve your appearance, your skin, your physique. You don't have to suck belly all the time. Though we know that being slim is not synonymous to being fit. So don't let that guy that is, is slim because of his gene make you feel less a fit guy. He might just be genetically blessed with a slim look. Being slim is not synonymous to being fit. Just like being fat is not synonymous to being healthy. All right, we have different genes, different body types. The most important thing is to choose the body that you want and be fit in it. Serena Williams is not slim, but I'm sure we can all agree to our level of fitness. You know, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, um, fitness helps you to tone up. Still talking about uh, appearance, no jiggly skin and all that. And it also helps to improve your flexibility. Right. Now, health helps you age better. Helps long longevity. It helps you have a better quality of life. Lower your stress level. Lower your blood pressure. Free from disease. Free from pain. Now. You cannot be totally healthy when you're not fit. And you cannot be totally fit if you're not healthy. 
That is why you need to know how to handle this. So why try to be fit when you're not? Why try to be healthy and not try to be fit? Some people, they say, ah, I eat clean, I eat clean, I watch what I eat, that's all I do, I don't need to exercise. Thank you if you eat well. But you see, that guy that exercises has more resistance to diseases because of how active the muscles are, you know. And you say, I go to the gym every day, and because of that, I can eat all the junks. Nope. That guy that eats clean also has the potential of living a better life, looking better. So you're going to the gym and you're drinking all the alcohol, you're doing drugs because you're going to the gym. You're killing your body, you're killing your, you're, you're losing collagen. You look, you're going to look older than that guy that eats clean. So it's important to know how to manage the two. Now, this is what you can achieve when you put the two together. Weight loss, if that's your goal. Improve strength, if that's your goal. Improve cardiovascular endurance, if that's your goal. When you bring fitness and you bring health together, these are the things. These are the few of the many things that you can achieve. Now, I'm going to highlight the 10 importance 10 importance of physical fitness. I don't know if I'm rushing too much. Well, I'll try and send this. <laughs> I'll try and send this document in um, later on. If it's something that you guys would like to look at. Um, number one, endurance. Cardiovascular endurance. Cardiorespiratory endurance. This is your body's ability to use and deliver oxygen to your body. That's why endurance is important. You build endurance through physical fitness. Stamina, muscular endurance. This is your body's ability to store, process, and use energy. Stamina, stamina, stamina. Man, stamina is very important. Very, very important in your everyday life. Strength. Strength is the ability of your muscle or muscular unit to apply force. Strength. Daddy, 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 I think I'm stuck. Daddy you should be able to pull Junior out, pull Junior's leg out. That strength is required. It's not everything you say call the gate man. Not everything you say call the driver. Daddy, you need strength. And you build it at the gym, at the place of physical fitness. Because even in the Bible, you say the Lord is my strength. If strength was not important, why would you attribute it to God? Strength is important. Though we know that that is spiritual strength, but the word strength is important. So if it's important to us spiritually, it is also supposed to be important to us physically. So you need to build strength. And also there's a scripture that says that he said, brothers and sisters, I beseech you in the name of God that you should present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Holy is spiritual, acceptable is physical. Some of us cannot accept our body the way it looks right now. It means you need to put it to work. All right? So just in case you say all these things will not be important when we get to heaven. Sorry, um, I can yeah, talk about I like to bring in a bit of spirituality when I'm talking fitness because it all relates. While on earth, we also need the body to be good. Uh, some people say all these things are vanity. Being fat is vanity. Being unfit is vanity. Being fit is vanity. So you have the choice to choose your own vanity. Being poor is vanity. Being rich is vanity. But you need to make sure you enjoy your vanity while you have it. And I'll move forward to power. Okay, flexibility first. Flexibility is the ability to maximize the range of motion of your joints. Range of motion of your joints. Stretch, yes, sir. Ah! Ah! Carry your leg up, you're screaming. Bend and pick something, you're screaming. You need flexibility to maximize the motion of your joints. This is very important. While you're young is very important. Uh, 
Uh, most of my clients are 50 plus, and I like the way they feel in their old age. And uh, some of them would wish they started early. So if you're, if you're 50 plus, it's not late. I've had clients that started at 50 plus, and at 55, they're, they're living their best life. If you're not up to 50, you're, you're an advantage to start now. Speed, okay, power first. Power is the ability of your muscle to maximize the force in a minimum amount of time. <coughs> Explosive force, that's power. Need it, and you can only build that in a place, in the place of physical fitness. We shall know that there are some people that are naturally very strong. Okay. So it doesn't mean that because you're starting, you're starting to engage in physical activity, you should think that everybody you meet on the road, you say, do you know me? Do you know I go to the gym? There are some people that don't need the gym. And so, yeah, it's important to know your strength, your power, and know a way to use it and when not to. Speed. Speed is the ability to maximize the amount of time it takes to accomplish a task or a movement. And you can agree with me that you need speed. Even in the place of work, your corporate space, you need speed. At home, you need speed. Even in the place of thinking, you need speed. And physical fitness has a way of making these things easier, even mentally. Coordination. Coordination is the ability to combine several different movement patterns in a single distinct movement. Coordination. So at the end of my session, we'll do some tests, some fit tests. So, uh, to just see where we are, to just see where we are. Um, accuracy. Accuracy is the ability to control a movement in a given direction or intensity. Accuracy is the ability to control a movement in a given direction or intensity. We move on to agility. Agility is the, is the ability to minimize the time going from one movement to the other. Some of us are very sluggish. And you can say, that's how I've been. That's how I've always been. Uh, you can improve your agility level in the place of physical fitness. You can improve. People have changed, um, inherited diseases. They say um, some, say some stroke, um, hypertension, high blood pressure, some people have corrected it in their time. They say, oh, my great grandfather had it, my father had it. Some people have corrected it in their time, in the place of physical fitness and healthy eating. So you cannot always say, oh, that's how I've always been. You can correct it. You just have to be conscious about it. Balance, that's the tenth one. Balance is the ability to control the center of gravity of your body in relaxation of your support base. Balance. These are all the things that you can get in the place of fitness. I can go on and on and on, but I want to stop right there just in case anybody has. I can, I'll go forward. I'll still talk about the other components, you know, other things that come together to make um, physical fitness um, and wellness, um, other things that come together to take us to a place of health, like sleep, like eating well, physical activity, which I've been talking about. Hygiene, 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 very important. Very important, very important. Hygiene is as important as every other thing. Relaxation, relaxation, especially if you're working in Lagos. I mean, it's good to be ambitious. It's good to be ambitious. Now, relaxation is commonly thought as only a mental exercise with only mental benefits. That's simply not true. Now listen to this. Tension can be built in muscles, causing headache or back pain, and stress hormones can cause a variety of nasty symptoms, including adrenal fatigue. In modern times, everyone packs their schedule full of events and put pressure on themselves to get ahead. Like I said earlier, Put too much, especially in Lagos, too much pressure on ourselves. When you ask me why you're not working, I say, where is the time? Where is the time? That's what we all say. But the truth is, you need that body to operate, you know, at its maximum best for you to even achieve 
these things that you're trying to achieve. And at the end of the day, after making all the money, you now travel from one country to the other, trying to look for a, a disease or a sickness solution, and you don't have the time to enjoy your money. So it is important for us to find time to relax and enjoy ourselves. You know, it could be getting a massage, it could be staying at home, it could be reading and finding time to read a good book, playing your favorite sports, you know. If I ask you now, so Timothy, let me ask, let me throw this question to you. What's your favorite sport? Um, it's between basketball and tennis. When was the last time you played basketball? I can't, I can't even remember. It's, it's so been how, so long. How do you stay so far away from what you consider a favorite activity? Work. That's our, that's our reflex answer. Work. When was the last time you played tennis? Uh, it's, <laughs> I think, 20, maybe, maybe like 2009 or there about. So this is what you long. do for Either you cancel them as being your favorite sporting activities or you find a way to get back to them. Now, I'm sure that there are most of us. Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, uh, this, this session is, is, is as if it's for me personally. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and I'm sure there are a lot of us in the room that can that have, you know, good activities, favorite activities that we've not been able to do, you know, because of, of, of this thing. Now, I'll talk about hygiene briefly before I stop. You know, these are the actions you take to maintain health and prevent diseases, you know. And they're simple. Showering, brushing our, our teeth, washing our hands, flossing, washing our clothes, um, cutting our nails, going for regular medical checks, you know, and even, do you know that it, hygiene helps you improve your mood? Some of us, there are some of us that easily get into depression, but let's say you're conscious of hygiene, and then maybe you're thinking of something that is making you feel really bad, and someone passes by you and tells you, wow, you smell good. What's the name of your colon? Do you know that that, in, that moment, that moment will raise your mood. Oh, whoa, I like your sneakers. I do study that. So you're like, yeah, I love them. Where can I get one? And you're like, okay, I bought it. Can you get one for me? You're like, sure, I can get one for you. Okay, I'll send you money. You get one for me. At that moment, it raises your mood. You know, so hygiene is very important. Very, very important. Very, very important. And now, when we talk about healthy eating, I'll touch healthy eating a bit because some people think when we say healthy eating, we're trying to make you Nebuchadnezzar, want you to eat grass all the day of your life. No, 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 no. But before I go into healthy eating, I will tell you something that I think a lot of you do. Do you know that there's a thin line between eating healthy and eating to lose weight? Now, I can eat to lose weight, but not necessarily eat healthy. And I can eat healthy, but then not to lose weight. Because when it comes to weight loss, weight gain, and weight maintenance, it's calorie in, calorie out. Meaning that if I have a 1,500 calorie mark to eat, to lose weight, and I fashion it my ice cream and pizza, into that 1,500 calorie mark, I will keep on losing weight, despite the fact that I'm eating junk. It does not mean you should go and start eating junk food. Or it does not mean you should go and start eating junk food. Also, I can, if I'm to eat 1,500 calorie mark a day, and I'm eating a 3,000 calorie bowl of vegetables and fruits, which is meant to be healthy, 
I'm eating an extra 1,500 calories, and I can, my weight loss journey is still far ahead of me. So there's a thin line between eating to lose weight and eating healthy. Now, because I know that I can eat junk and still lose weight, it doesn't mean I should eat junk because if they say food is medicine, it means I should not take the wrong medication for a particular treatment. You cannot have malaria, you go and take uh, medication that is not a malaria medication. It means I should eat the right food, which is the right medicine for the issue, which is health. It means that I cannot also eat too much because I'm not also supposed to overdose on the right medicine just because it's the right medicine. Meaning that portion control is very important. I like using two words. Pro, um, uh, proportion and consideration. I think that's the word, yeah. It has to be in the right proportion. You also have to consider the reason why you are doing what you're doing. So, um, I would have loved to touch GI of food. Maybe I'll touch a bit of GI. So this is what you do for me. When you get home, Google the word GI, glycemic index. So glycemic index will make you know the food that have, first of all, know the meaning of glycemic index as it relates to food. And then know the food with high glycemic index and know the food with low glycemic index. Because sometimes when you tell people eat fruits, you don't know that fruits like banana and watermelon have high glycemic index. It means that you should, meaning that you should control your intake of this food. These fruits, you now say, some people will pack, who eat one bottle of, one short bottle of granite and one bunch of banana in one city. I say, today I'm not eating food though. I've only done only fruits. Until you, it's better to eat that swallow and that pussy soup. Just eat it at once. Because what you put in your system right now, in that quantity, that quantity is more than that one plate of pussy and swallow. So GI, once you study the GI of food, it will help you know how, how to choose, you know, the content of your meal and what proportion you should eat. Uh, let me jump to another very important part. So I've, been, so I've been able to talk about exercise. I've been able to talk about the different intensity, just in case you want to do stuff for yourself. And I've also been able to talk about how to manage with food and the importance. So I'm ready to take questions because I'll talk about how to choose. Because some of you will now would now want to talk about um, how to find the right trainer, you know, and so on. How do you know the right trainer? Just in case you need to take up the best, the 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 um, take up the services of a personal trainer. Some of you would want to know how to find the right trainer. How do you know when your trainer is the right trainer? When you walk into the gym, when you're talking to the gym instructor, how do you know that the gym instructor, you know, will meet your you at your need? I'll also talk about that, but before then, I'd like to get some questions. If you have questions, then I'll talk about that. If we have time. Okay. All right. Um, I just, I just want to say um, this has been really impactful. Like um, there's just so many thoughts, you know, going through my head. But I'll just try to start with some. Of the, I, I think this would be one of the major questions that you know we would want to ask. So for us bankers, yeah, we we spend most of our time in the office. More than nine to five, if I may say, we spend a lot of time in the office and majority of this time is spent sitting down. Which, you know, equates to a sedentary lifestyle. So I, I, would, I would like to ask what pra what practical steps or what practical tips and advice would you give, you know, us as bankers, 
you know, to improve our, our health and wellness, considering the kind of um, occupation we have and the kind of lifestyle that we live. There are few options to explore. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Now, there's a, um, option A, which is the highest option, is um, the system understanding the importance of physical exercises for staff, for corporate, and the system putting together a plan for um, wellness and fitness activities, um, community fitness activities to happen from time to time and realistic goals set for, for staff. So for example, if there is a monthly fitness team bonding activity um, on a certain day of the month, you will, not be, you will not say that you need to be in the office because the office, is, the office has made it possible that that day should be work free day for a fitness activity. So we meet up together at different um, branches with different trainers and we do a one hour of fitness um, activity, fun fitness activity, good stretches, and we leave a target for the rest of the month. So let's say we do this first Saturday of the month and we leave a walking target of a certain kilometer to cover, a jogging target of a certain kilometer to cover, um, a certain number of push-ups to cover, a certain numbers of plank plant minutes to cover and a price at the end of the month. So what that does is it creates a community within the organization for everybody to be everybody's accountability partner, to try to work together to see if they can achieve that goal. How many targets have you met? Yeah, what have, what have, you, done, what have you done with your run this week? And this person is like, oh my, I've done 50 kilometers. Oh, what? And I'm still on 20. No, 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 no. I need to double up in the next week to try to meet up with yours. So there is this community. And when you talk about running, you don't need the long road to run. You can run at a spot in your house and just time yourself. Also, um, there are short, short workouts. So there's something I'm trying to, so I'm trying to make Tabata very popular because Tabata is a music source that helps you to walk for 20 seconds and rest for 10 seconds. By the time you do that for eight rounds, that's four minutes in that one song. So for example, if you had two Tabata songs, that would be eight minutes. So even if you had 10 minutes only to exercise in your house, that means that's two Tabata songs. You worked out for four minutes, one minute rest in between, another four minutes, that's nine minutes, and then you have one minute to stretch at the end. If you have more hours, you just need to keep downloading another Tabata song another Tabata song if you have more hours. So that's option one, to build a community within the organization. Option two is to have um, a corporate wellness plan for staff. So staff know that they need, they have a gym that is close to their office that they are registered to. They need to go and work out. And also I always like tying uh, a price to to encourage accountability. So at the end of the day, the gym or the wellness um, when wellness outfit would submit the attendance sheet to the office at the end of the month to know which staff has been most consistent. So there could be a price for the biggest loser in terms of weight if weight loss is their goal, the, the biggest gainer in terms of muscle, if that's their goal, the most consistent staff, if that's the goal, and put a price to it. Like I said, it also keeps the community together. So that way, fitness in, in the corporate space has a way of making staff more friendly away from their different departments. So it's normally it's harder for you in marketing to know someone in operations or admin because that is really not your business. Your business is to just go to marketing, re, re, you know, resume my marketing and then. But when there's a commu fitness community built in the, the, 
the establishment. It helps you to know yourselves more. It even helps to foster a, a better working community. You know, so to answer your question, it has to be, first of all, it has to be a thing for the corporate. But then for personal growth, for a personal goal, you don't need a lot of hours between the time you wake up and the time you get ready to work. All you need is five, 10, 15 minutes. Some of you are very spiritual. You say, by the time I wake up and I'm done praying, your workouts can be your worship. Your workout can come around your prayer. All you need to do is to put your earpods. If it's a worship song you like listening to, you can listen to your worship song while you're working out. Or if it's prayers you like listening to, or you just like doing the prayer yourself, you can do that with your workout. All you need to do is lock in that moment. You don't have to kneel on the ground. I don't, I don't think there's any law that says you always, you almost, you have to kneel on the ground for God to answer your prayers. Your workout can be the place of worship, the place where you interact with your creator. So all you need is, you need 10 minutes at most to have a good workout. You just need to be conscious of what you eat and then let the minutes grow with time. Because once you start seeing results, you'll be more motivated to go forward. And of course, if you get a personal trainer that can come to your house, that can be your accountability partner. But remind me before I finish, you can ask more questions. Remind me towards the end. Let me let you know how you can find a good trainer. Okay. Okay, so um, there's a question I have here. It says, um, how can you determine your fitness level? We spoke about it earlier. Remember when we we're talking about the different intensities. Yes. Workout. Um, and I'll go back to those intensities. We said low intensity. You try out a low intensity workout. How do you feel? You breathe easy. Your body is warm. You're not sweating that much. You can easily talk in full sentence or even sing when you're doing casual walking, stretching, tai chi. Now I'll jump to me. I can run very fast and still talk. Okay, that that's because you built your fitness level. Okay. I can skip and sing. In my aerobics class, I shout all through my class from start to finish and I walk all through because I need to motivate people. Mm. So these are how you know moderate intensity. If you're brisk walking, water aerobics, um, volleyball, riding a bike on the plain ground and doing the tennis, double tennis, all those little jogging and you can you can still talk, make a sentence, but not sing. You know that you are moderate at moderate intensity level. But if you can do all this, still be able to sing. Like that's the easiest way. If you can do the toughest exercise and still have a conversation. Now, uh, let me let me bring let me make a practical let me bring a practical um, option to it. And uh, permit me to do this. Now. I need to hold on guys let me unblur my environment so you know what i'm talking about the background okay so see my environment is better now see my environment is better now right yes yes okay so this is one of the easiest form of exercise it's called jumping jacks one of the easiest form of exercises. So how you can track your endurance, how you can track your fitness level is, set your time at one minute. How many jumping jacks can you do in one minute? If you can do 60 jumping jacks in one minute, meaning one jumping jack per second, that means you're on an average fitness level. If you can do more than 60 jumping jacks in 60 seconds, that means you have a good fitness level. If you do less jumping jacks in 60 seconds, that means you are at a beginner fitness level. So you can use jumping jacks to test yourself. Yeah. 
that's, that's fantastic. That's a very practical one. Um, so I have a question. This, um, so, so, uh, one of the attendees is saying, there are a lot of people with pre-existing health conditions like diabetes, high BP, heart conditions. What's the best way they can keep fit? So, first, we always advise that if you have these pre-existing health conditions, first you, you um, inquire from your doctor, from your physician. Now, they are, they are light, like I said, some of my clients are 50 plus, and of course, some have pre-existing um, health conditions, which, I mean, some of them have high blood pressure and the rest. Um, and, and so we have to check their BP before we even work out every morning, you know, to know what workout and what intensity. Now, if you have a good trainer, it is important during your consultation time, your trainer will know exactly your health um, history, your health status, and will be able to design a workout program based on that understanding together with a good healthy eating plan and regular checks with your physician you know so these are like very easy things to do we just have everybody that needs to work just have to be conscious i tell you as a personal trainer these are what your personal trainer needs to do number one exercise programming your personal trainer needs to know a bit of nutrition and weight management number two exercise physiology your trainer needs to know basic emergency and safety procedures if my client faint now i feel resuscitate them can i resuscitate my clients am i conscious enough to make sure that as i'm training that client i'm watching to make sure that that client does not exceed his endurance threshold so that we won't, we won't avoid the client from fainting. So it's important for your trainer to know that physiology. Functional anatomy and, and biomechanics. Functional anatomy and biomechanics. This is basically program administration. Understanding the body, the muscle composition, understanding the weight so that you not give a, a big gut person, a leaner person's kind of program. You cannot be wearing 120 kg and I bring a box and I say jump on the box. An athletic program. I cannot do that. Do you understand? So a good a good trainer should know, you know, basic anatomy and, and, and environment. And then assessment and fitness testing, human behavior and motivation. That's the most important part. See, there are some clients that come to me, and the moment they walk into the gym, I know they are not in their, in their best mood. So I know I have to keep my funny jokes apart before they will slap me that day. So I stick to the workout, and I ease them in to a point where they can now open up to a good conversation and a good smile. There are some days, those days, I don't give them stressful exercise. I give them fun exercises. To help lift the mood. There are some days where I see they come really high top. I know that that's the day for heavy exercise because I need to help you reduce on who you are the And you come like that, make sure that I exhaust that energy you came with and you crawl back into your car and go home. Because I know I cannot always have you that same way every day. So um, for people, I mean, for people, like I said, like you said earlier, for people that have this, we work with your doctor, we work with your. Um, Nutritionist, and of course, a good trainer knows exactly what to do for you. Okay. All right. Um, I think the last question is um, sorry, just a second. So, what are the things, what are the exercises you can? So, basically, this person is trying to find out how can you keep fit on a low budget? <laughs> ah, so, see. Fitness is so important that you don't want to do fitness on a low budget. But of course, there's fitness on a low budget. But I don't want you to have the mindset that you have to do fitness on a low budget. 
right? Because you do fit. Fitness, fitness in itself is a low budget lifestyle. It keeps you away from the doctor, from paying huge medical bills. It keeps you away from the, from the, from the clothes shop because you can wear the same thing for a long time because you've been able to maintain a particular weight. Some people will buy clothes in the next two months they are going to shop for new clothes because they've grown bigger than those, the old clothes, you know, and so on and so forth. A fit person, I mean, fitness in its real sense, some people, because I know there are some people that go to the gym but still drink a lot of alcohol and do some other kinds of um, sedentary lifestyle behavior. If you do not drink alcohol, say you know you've saved club money, <laughs> mm. and so on so fitness living a fit conscious life is helps you to you know cut costs a lot so that's why you need to put the costs in the fitness lifestyle you know but you don't need anybody to teach you how to run i've just taught you how to do interval runs it helps you to track your run all you need to invest in is the gears that help you exercise properly helps you keep accountability like your fit beat or the app that is on your phone whatever phone i'm sure this all these new generation phone have to have the help you track your fitness level water is not expensive drink regular water drink water regularly water is not expensive except you're buying it at the club but then you're not going to the club because you're not drinking alcohol so you cannot buy a bottle of water for one thousand five hundred and one thousand you're still buying from the store um, what else? You don't have to eat salmon. You can eat mackerel. You don't have to buy spinach. There's water leaf. There's ubu leaf. So even in the place of eating healthy, it must not be too expensive. True. And exercising, push-ups. You start by one push-up. Can you hear me and see me clearly? Yes. You can start with three push-ups. Five push ups, 10 push ups before you get to 20 push ups. Like, I, you see, jumping jacks, the exercise I show you, showed you earlier on. That's one of the most yes. underrated, underrated exercises because it's used for all, but also one of the most effective exercises if you do it intentionally. So, you see, jumping jacks, try doing one minute of jumping jacks 10 times and rest for one minute in between them. That's 20 minutes of work, 10 minutes of active work, 10 minutes of rest time. That's all the exercise you need. When you do it, tell me how you feel the next day. Your whole body, your shoulders, your back, your legs, your core, you feel it. Forget about accessory exercises. Those are when we're trying to get into a fun place, when we hang our leg up and turn ourselves upside down. It is not what makes you lose fat. These are accessories. These are the things that we need to bring into the healthy living to make it a lifestyle. So it's not boring. We just bring them in to make it fun. But the basics are simple. Push-ups, squats, sit-up, jumping jacks, high knees. I'll show you a few programs. So I show you. I show you ten programs. For example, we have. Jumping jacks. That's one program. You get a swim shot, you can rise it down. Jumping jacks. We have high knees. So you can either do your high knees like this, or you can put your hand there to make sure that your knees are as high as you should be. You have drop squats. Drop squats. Drop. 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 You have Cross jacks, cross. Oh. Even as a guy, you do one minute of cross jacks, you feel it on your chest. I see the little shoulders. It helps you on that part as well. Um, those things. You have squats, normal squats. That is squats. By the time you perfect squats, you are now going to jump squats. You have push-ups. You have planks. You 
You have standing ordinary kicks. Kick, 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 kick. All right? You have lunges. And so on. So, you never to put these programs together. Try something for me. Put these programs together. Do each of these programs for one minute if you can. Because I bet you there are some programs that you won't be able to go for one minute without breaking in between. But it's okay to catch your breath in between. Do each program, yeah. but if you catch your breath, don't stop your timer. Let it go because the only way you can track your growth is when you get to a point where you go through the one minute without needing to, you know, stop your timer. So do these programs all for one minute each and rest for one minute in between. By the time you get to the end, tell me how you feel. All right. Okay, just a, a quick one before we, because we, we need to round off now. Um, someone asked, so out of these exercises, which is the best to burn belly fat? I know. Belly fat question. <laughs> yes, sir. Listen, listen, before I answer that question, your, your physique is not an ingredient of It's only, it's not the ingredient, it's a mere complement of fitness. The ingredient is health. So that big tummy is a choice. And it's 60% what you eat, how you eat, when you eat, and 30, 40% workout. But to answer your question, any program that raises your heart rate burns visceral fat. Sit-ups okay. only helps you to tone up the walls of your tummy. So I see a lot of people do sit up to lose tummy fat. No, you will have a big, strong tummy, a big muscular tummy, if you depend on only sit-up to lose belly fat. So food, watch your food first. What you eat, how you eat, where you eat first, and then cardiovascular endurance exercises, everything that I showed you. Will help you lose total body fat, including visceral fat. And when you start losing that fat, you can now start doing punches and sit ups to tone up the midsection. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, I just want to sincerely appreciate you, Kemen, for this session. It's been a very impactful, and you know, I'm sure a number of us would like to go on for <laughs> for even the next hour because of all the fantastic uh, gems and you know tips that you've uh, given us this morning uh, i just want to say a big thank you on behalf of um, heritage bank and on behalf of everybody uh, present at this session this morning just want to say a big thank you it's been very impactful you know one of the key points i'm leaving with is you know knowing that the physical um physical uh fitness and well uh, and um healthy eating and yes. luggages that we're carrying on this journey of wellness yes. and, and the destination yes. is health, good health. So uh, just want to say big thank you once more. It's been a very, very um, impactful session, if I must say, and uh, I'm very sure we're going to put all of these into practice, you know, and, you know, it will take us even to healthier lifestyles and, you know, healthier um, of their lives. So thank you very much, Kemen. Uh, thank, thank you, you everyone you. who has been a part of this session. Um, this is just the first session in, in the series. So tomorrow, same time, it's going to be another impactful session and um, would appreciate if you can join us once more. So thank you very much. Do have a fantastic uh, rest of the day. Um, the video will be uploaded on, on YouTube. Um, once that's done, I'm sure we'll publicize this in, internally. So once more, just a big thank you. Do have a fantastic day.